In this video, I will provide you with a estimated size for your roof rafter seat cuts. And the seat cut is located at the bottom of the rafter. The plum cut or the ridge cut is located up here. And this is a question that seems to keep popping up over and over again, even though I've mentioned it in a variety of different videos. And one of those questions is the size right here, and the other is the size right here. And you can kind of get an idea by watching the rest of the video that one of the sizes will dictate the size of the other size. For example, if I make this one longer, then this one here is going to be longer. And if I make this one here shorter, this one here is going to be shorter. And I'm not about to suggest that's going to happen all the time, but the main part I'm going to focus on in this video, the most important one to me is going to be this cut here, or the level cut. And I would like to see this at least two inches long. However, I've seen them as short as an inch and a half before. And there are very few cases where this cut right here, the plum cut on the roof rafter, is going to matter as much as this one over here. So let's go ahead and take a look at another consideration you might have, and that will be the width of the wall framing top plate. Here we have a two by six that is five and a half inches wide with about three inches here. So inch and a half down here, and I believe we have a five and 12 roof pitch and a two by 10 roof rafter. And from what I gather for most engineers, once we put a notch in a piece of lumber like this, we're going to reduce the strength for the lumber supporting the overhang. So here we're gonna have eight and three sixteenths inches out of a nine and a half inch two by 10, which should be strong enough for most two foot long overhangs. And of course, this brings me to another problem with the seat cut length, especially when referring to heavier roofing materials like tile that might require wider lumber for your overhang or loads from snow setting on your roof for a long period of time that might require a wider overhang. I will not be able to provide you with information for those lumber sizes. You'll have to check with a structural engineer for that. Another thing that can affect the length of the roof cut will be the pitch of the roof. Here we have a 2 and 12 roof pitch with a 2 by 10 roof rafter that has an 8 and 5 eighths inch measurement from here to here, along with about a 2 and 3 quarter inch horizontal C cut measurement and a plum cut measurement of 7 sixteenths of an inch. However, if I change the angle to a 12 and 12 pitch, I'm going to reduce this measurement here considerably if I keep the same measurement of five and a half inches for the horizontal seat cut measurement. And with this example and the previous example here, you can get a pretty good idea how I won't be able to provide you with the exact measurement. However, by the time you finish watching the video, you should have a pretty good idea why sometimes they're gonna to need to be a little longer than a little shorter. In our next example, let's go ahead and reduce the horizontal seat cut measurement to two and three quarter inches to provide you with an example of how this measurement here will increase by reducing the length of the horizontal measurement. Now for the grand finale in the video, let's go ahead and change the two by 10 to a two by six. And if we keep our two and three quarter inch horizontal seat cut measurement, we're going to reduce this measurement here to about three and a half inches, which by now should give you a pretty good idea how some of the different roof pitches and material sizes for your roof rafters can significantly reduce this measurement here, suggesting that if we can reduce the horizontal measurement here for a seat cut, we might choose to if we're going to be using smaller lumber or dealing with steeper roof pitches. And we're going to be using ceiling joists. Now this is the key here because we're going to be able to get more nailing with our ceiling joists. We're going to be able to connect the roof rafters to each one of the joists. And then we can put more nails in the framing plates. Maybe two from the roof rafter going into the framing plate. And then two more from the ceiling joist going into the framing plate. And that will be on both sides of the roof rafter and the ceiling joist. If possible, along with the nails, we're gonna be able to drive in through the ceiling joist 
or through the roof rafter on the other side into the ceiling joist to create a nice connection. So if something like this will work for your project and you don't have a choice, then you might have to use it. Another option might be structural hardware that might provide you with even a better connection if you have to use smaller seed cuts. And the last tip I want to provide you with in this video, and it might not work all the time because you might be dealing with a different roof, would be to drive around your area to see if you can find a similar roof, similar to the one you're planning on building, and then check out the materials they used for their overhang, for their roof rafters, and for their seat cuts if you can see them. If not, at the very least, you'll have a pretty good idea about the material sizes to build a 2 foot or a 16 inch overhang for a roof in your area.